Hello, my name is Nico Tripsevich at the Archaeological Research Facility at UC Berkeley. This is part two of a workshop on bringing data into QGIS from a GNSS or total station and then making simple site maps, archaeological maps for in QGIS and then outputting those in a digital format. So let's go ahead and get started. Where we left off, we were in QGIS. I had brought these points in using the um, CSV format, the, the tabular format. And <clears throat> so I'm going to show you how to, first of all, I, I uh, added labels to these points already by turning on the, the styling panel here over on the right and then choosing label. And then I'm labeling by the name field. And then um, I turned on draw text buffer with this uh, tab and it draws that white buffer around it. So next up on mapping, we are going to create a polygon layer and we're going to create this layer in the geo package format. So create new layer, new geo package. Uh, I have a geo package called Smith already and I'm going to add a table or a, or a layer to it called I'm going to call it Smith A, which is for area. And that's because it's a polygon, polygon shape. The rest of the data in this project is in a UTM coordinate, UTM 10 north. So I'm going to match that in here. And then I'm going to add a couple of fields to my polygon. I'm going to add the labeling and add to fields, and then I'm going to add a category. This is more for mapping, so you can aggregate similar layers for mapping purposes. And then I'll write a description, I'll create a description field, and this is going to be the maximum size for strings, which is 254, 255, all right? Then when I click OK, it's going to ask if I want to overwrite that existing Smith geo package or add a new layer. Well, I would like to not erase all my previous data. So I'm going to add a new layer to that existing geo package. So here it is, my new polygon layer. I'm going to move it underneath the points so that points are visible on top. And this is how you edit in QJS. Select your active layer here, make it editable. It's open for editing. And then you can choose your create new polygon tool right here. And I'm going to go ahead and digitize this house, uh, this Julia Morgan house here on the Smith property. You can see it goes right up there. One thing about polygons is if I were to click over here, this would be an invalid polygon because polygons have to be, can't have areas that are indeterminate inside and outside, they have to be they have to have clear topology of what's inside and what's outside the polygon. And the figure eight is essentially an invalid polygon. So I'm gonna click left and then I'll click right to, to end the digitizing. And here's, uh, I'm gonna call this the Smith house. And it's a structure, okay. Let's make another one over here, call this, Left click to close it, other house structure. Okay. And then here's a trailer uh, container down here. I'm going to call this something else. I'll just leave this blank so you can see how the category fields work. Now, <clears throat> I use this tool to draw a new polygon. This tool is for editing an existing polygon. And if you hover over here, it provides some clues about how to use this tool. If you see, it says Alt click to select vertices by polygon. So I could, for example, move this wall by holding down Alt, selecting these vertices by polygon. And then now if I click and move, I'm moving that entire wall because that, those vertices are both selected. 
and I'll click to move away. That's how this one works. If you'd like to do more advanced um, sort of CAD-like tools, uh, more editing that involves right angles and very numeric um, uh, distance and angles, try the advanced digitizing pane. You turn it on like this. It's only available in UTM coordinates, not uh, latitude or longitude. And there's more information on advanced digitizing in the help. So <clears throat> I'd like to now show you a little bit more about styling. So let's close, let's stop editing. If you, if you don't like your um, edits and you want to save without, you want to exit without saving, turn, turn off editing. And this is your opportunity to discard your changes. If you like what you've done, say save. And you should click that little disk during, you know, periodically when things are going well, because um, it's possible to lose a lot of work while editing if you have a crash or have some interruption that prevents you from saving after a lot of digitizing. So <clears throat> this polygon has um, three, this polygon layer has three objects on it. And with the, the styling pane turned on, here we can choose the symbology. I'm going to go to categorize symbology. And then using the category field, you can it's hard to see down here, but I can classify all the layers. There's only, there's basically the one I typed in for structure and then all others are here, which includes its container. So that's how that works. And you can edit these. Let's say I don't like the pink and double click it and change this to a different color. Back out, uh, labeling or here. And <clears throat> another thing I'd like to demonstrate is the satellite image in the background. It's from the Quick Map Services plugin. And it's possible to, for example, add uh, another layer, such as OpenStreetMap. And you can also. Um, lighten and darken the opacity of the satellite image by, by changing it in the global opacity styling right. panel. All right, so final step with creating a map is that you need to add a legend and it's or certainly a scale and a north arrow and potentially a legend. So I'll go ahead and demonstrate that. When you're in data view here, you can zoom in and out, and you're sort of unconstrained by scale. However, when you when you um, want to put a scale bar on, then you have to decide how big your final map production will be, and then scale is is determined based on your final map. So it's you can't add a scale bar right now because I haven't you have to decide how big your final map will be. So the way you do that is you go to print layout, and I'm going to call this one letter portrait. And then there it is. You click on the white space. You can see the size is A4, the metric version of uh, paper, paper size. And then the orientation changed to portrait. And to bring the data in, use this tool. This one allows you to pan around and you can specify your scale bar, your scale. Explicitly, that was 1260. I'm going to one to 500 and fills the page. <clears throat> so, scale bar is available right here. So anytime you choose something from the menu, you then draw a box to indicate where it's going to go. So there's my scale bar. So up here, I can make some adjustments. Fixed width. I might think I'm going to make that five, and have the have three segments of five, 
of five each for a total of 15. And then since we're in the United States, maybe I'll add a second scale bar with feet on it. So I just draw a second scale bar, move it to position, and I can change the units here. And then I think I'd like those numbers to be on the bottom, so I can snug them in closely. So I'll change that to below segments. There we go. And then finally, every object on a page layout has a frame and a background. So for example, if I choose this scale bar, scroll down, there's the frame in the background. Um, could be a little bigger. This font is kind of far from the scale bar. So let's choose the, this one. Maybe I'll rename it scale bar. And specify that the distance from the text should be just two. And I'll bring the, the margin in a little closer. And then it's a good idea to group these. You don't have to worry about them coming, coming apart. So I'm going to have those two selected, right click. Now I can move them. Another common feature of a map is a legend. So let's go ahead and add the legend. So <clears throat> this is a dynamic legend. If I, let's say I want to update this Smith A to you know, correct the capitalization, I can go back to the original map change what the layer is called here, Smith. And I go back to my page layout, it updated automatically. But if there's a lag, click refresh, it should reflect your changes. That's because when I choose legend here and scroll down, Auto update is checked. But let's say we want to make some changes here. First of all, we, you know, we, we don't have OSM showing, so let's remove that from our legend. Other small changes. Basically, when you're done going back and forth and making changes in the original map, um, it's kind of a final step to get a, a legend that I uh, that I like. I often have to. Un uncheck that. So auto updating is turned off. And then you can really tinker with the legend settings. So Google Hybrid, that base layer is for some reason has a taking a lot of white space. So now that auto update is off, you can still doesn't want to allow me to. So I think I'll um, you can also hide things even if they're part of the the active map. So if I wanted to edit this, let's say I wanted to say other here, you can edit the legend. Now that auto update is unchecked. <clears throat> All right. Um, we might add a label for a title. So add label, call it Smith House. And this is one place where some of the, the new, more uh, WYSIWYG or what you see is what you get. GIS like ArcGIS Pro would, would allow me to type right here, but you know, QGIS, you make the edits here and it appears over there. It's fine. Here's where the fonts are adjusted.
For more details on the font, you can open it up there and change the size. The, it's common for maps to have a black line around the edge of the map, so I can choose the background, scroll down and down the frame. And another issue that comes up frequently is, let's say I want to move things around a little bit. Sometimes it can be hard to select things in front of the, the map. So often I'll, I'll lock the map layer so that then I can select things without worrying about nudging the map around. So this one could use a frame for aesthetic reasons. Okay, now we have a frame. As for edit, as for output goes, I'm gonna export to PDF. This WMS servers alert is basically saying that the Google image in the background, uh, if it was for a big region, it might not export successfully. So be aware of that. And here we have letter. The next export page asks, do we want to use lossy compression? Lossy means it loses a little bit of data, but it's much more efficient compression. Lossless will result in a larger file, but you often, um, you know, if, you, if you anticipate people will be zooming in, then you should give them a lossless if, if you can possibly do so, because then when they, they zoom in on something on the map, should be as sharp as it was in QGIS. All right, so that's about it for this map production demonstration. Thank you for watching this demo and um, please check our YouTube channel for other workshops.